we know that at Sentry, at least, that a broken app or experience isn't just attributable to errors within the code base, that performance can also be a reason um, for a bad user experience with your product. And thankfully, that's another dimension or data type that you can alert on within Sentry. And this is kind of what we're going to use to round out at least the baseline we're trying to establish. So if you go back into your alerting uh, wizard here, you can see there's various um, metric alerts that you can configure based on performance data. So we're in a front end project right now. So perhaps we want to set a metric alert based on regressions, perhaps in an internal SLA for largest conical paint, or maybe our service uses an API and we want to, and we've had some custom instrumentation around, you know, tracking performance of calls to that API. And we want to use transaction duration. Um, if you're in a backend project, perhaps you want to use throughput or failure rate. There's a number of options depending on which project you're trying to set up um, performance within. And we also have performance for mobile, just in case there's some mobile folks on here. I know that we're talking, you know, kind of from a web context right now, but we've expanded our performance capabilities. So this is available for mobile or, well, the mobile applicable um, performance metrics are, are available for alerting to you. So let's go into largest kind of full paint just as, as an example. Again, we get our time series here. We can select an environment. And what's nice, Sentry will automatically, in a lot of SDKs, instrument um, at least a baseline of performance. And so in a web context, it's going to label some transactions for us. So I know, um, at least in this project, we have a products page that we're mindful of LCP on. And threshold type is something that I haven't introduced yet that we're gonna come back to when we talk about sort of historical changes in the profile of your you know, incoming data within Sentry. For now, we're gonna stick with count. So we're just gonna specify looking at the P75 computed over a shifting window of 30 minutes here, um, which will update you know, our time series and also allow us to start to specify, specify thresholds. I believe four seconds is around the recommendation here for at least um, from a Google Web Vitals perspective. So we can set that. It looks like we're gonna be alerted a lot in this case. You can specify a warning as well, if that's applicable or if that's something that you're interested in. I'll keep it simple for now. And then again, modalities, integrations, actionability. These are all topics we'll revisit in different ways. We're kind of getting a little heavy. Uh, I don't want to get too repetitive here, but a number of integration options are available. Maybe we'll just keep it uh, emailing a specific team uh, for breaches in this threshold for now obviously update the team that's responsible for it. And we can say LCP regression perhaps on a particular you know, transaction that we're, that we're interested in. Again, the visualization will help you kind of identify where your thresholds are and then we'll save this rule. 